Yo, Elliot, it's my first week in the program. There's a ton to absorb, and I'm loving it. I know it's going to take time to implement the massive transformation, but I have a pressing issue that I want to ask about. For the first time, I'm recognizing that my body and emotions and my wife and her emotions aren't annoying problems that need to be solved and made to go away. Okay. At the same time, I'm realizing that while I need to listen to and care for my body and for my wife in a healthy way, I also can't give into their every desire and impulse. As the man, it's my role to care for them, both now and in the future. This sometimes means doing uncomfortable things or setting up boundaries that my body's animal nature and my wife's feminine nature are going to chafe at. Yeah. I'm struggling to establish firm boundaries for the good of my body and my wife, while at the same time being in tune, listening, and being receptive to their feedback so that I can care for them. How do you juggle this tension? Well, it's, it's very similar to what we were talking about before, about knowing the situation and responding appropriately. A lot of times, especially as men, like we want a hard and fast rule about how to be with everything, right? Like, like they say, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And for a man, it kind of, I don't want to say that you're lazy, but in a way we're kind of lazy as men. This was, this was Adam's fault at the fall, that he was too lazy. He was lazy and his wife took over. And for guys, a lot of times we want to like, we want to have the efficiency. Let me put it that way. Maybe it's laziness, but maybe it's efficiency. And so efficiency means like, okay, I have this tool and, I, and I'm just going to use this tool. What you're asking me right now is for a hard and fast rule. How do I, what do I do with this? And what I'm saying to you is these are tools. Being objective is a tool. Uh, and then also being subjective is a tool. Because really that's what we're talking about. We're talking about objective point of view, subjective point of view. Objective is rational. Objective is thinking things through, separating yourself from it seeing it for what it is, and not being emotionally engaged with it. Seeing things from afar, being stoic, right? That's a tool. But so is subjectivity. Sometimes you need to get in touch with your intuition. Sometimes you need to sense the emotional situation. Sometimes you need to hear out or, or experience the emotional situation right you need to be there because there's information there where there's emotions there's information um abraham hicks calls it our emotional guidance system and i will tell you this no emotion is wrong no emotion is wrong there's no such thing as a wrong emotion there's wrong attachment to emotion there's wrong uh what we like to do is give meaning to emotion or we like to analyze emotion we like to meet say that it stands for something or it's because of something right that's not true at all any association that we make with emotion is we making it up emotion is what it's movement in the body that's all it is what is a feeling a feeling is just something you feel a feeling is not a thinking Right. A feeling is just a feeling. It's just a sensation. That's all it is. It's all it is. But when we attach, when we give content to it, when we try to explain it away or when we decide that we need to do something, this is where it becomes dangerous. When we decide we need to do something because of a feeling, that's when we got to back off a little bit. I never say don't feel your feelings. I will say, don't trust yourself when you're wrapped up in feelings, because usually you're not thinking. And so when you're talking about your body, I understand what you're saying. You're talking about your subjective experience. Something happens and there's a movement in your body. And it's the same for your wife to a greater or lesser degree, depending on the type of woman that she is. So you want to be there to have boundaries and to be objective for yourself so that you could also provide that for your wife. And that's a good thing too. Women appreciate that from their men. Women really appreciate when their men don't jump into the river of the emotions with them, stand back for a moment, hear them out, and maybe she wants advice, maybe she doesn't, but she just wants a rock to lean on in her times of turbulence. That's all really women want sometimes. I know, and my wife is probably one of the most rational women I know, and that's crazy. That's probably part of the reason why it works with us, because I never had to, like, figure her out. But when she gets into her cycles, she gets more 
feminine, you know, more emotional. Let me put it that way. A little bit more turbulent with her emotions. And she just even warns me sometimes. She's like, I'm being irrational right now. I'm getting my period. And I know that it doesn't make any sense. But I'm feeling like this right now. I'm just warning you. And she'll tell me. And that's the most beautiful thing. Because then I'm like, okay, cool. That means I need to back up a little bit and not engage with her where she's going. And be strong for her. Like, okay, all right. That's usually when I speak less. When she gives me that warning that she's being emotional. That means, okay, oh, okay. then I back up and I listen. I spend more listening. And I, hmm, oh, okay. And just hugs. Just hugs. That's all she wants. When a woman's emotional, she don't want you to solve her problems. She don't want you to jump into problems with her. One of these words, I learned the, I word, I learned the word empathy. I know what the word empathy means, but I watched the video not too long ago, and this guy was denigrating empathy, and I, and I totally related to it. I was like, wow, that's amazing. He says empathy is not a good idea. This guy was a Christian pastor, too, who was a preacher, and he was like, Jesus never asked you to be, to be empathetic, but the world has fooled us into being empathetic, but empathy is not a good thing. You don't want to be empathetic, because empathetic means that I'm jumping into that emotion with you. Sympathetic means that I see where you're at, and I'm and I'm I'm remaining distant, but I'm acknowledging you, right? I'm sympathetic for you. It's okay to be sympathetic. I'm sympathetic, so I'm gonna hold you, I'm gonna hug you, but I'm not going there with you. Empathetic means you get down there in the dirt there with them and you don't wanna do that. And you don't wanna do that with your emotions either. You don't you don't empathize with your emotions. Cause that means I'm just gonna let it carry me away. I'm gonna just jump in that river with it. No. You sympathize, meaning you see it. Oh, I see what's going on here. I respect it. Cool. There may be something that you could you could do to help resolve it, or maybe not, because it's not even the 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 point. But is to remain objective. How is that? Isn't that interesting? You can remain objective to a subjective experience. That's master of your domain. I'm, I'm having a subjective experience, like with my wife, like I was telling you. She's having a subjective experience. I'm emotional. But I'm going to be objective about it by saying, watch out, I'm emotional, I know it doesn't make any sense, I'm just warning you. When she does that, man, that was a, she, she's been doing that since we were young. And I was like, wow, this is the most amazing thing. I don't know if there's too many women that do that. But she don't even trust herself. And she tell me, don't trust, don't trust me right now, I'm emotional. So just back up. So it's the same thing with you. It's the same thing with your personal experience with your emotions and the same thing with your wife. You, 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 when you say I'm struggling to establish firm boundaries, there's no firm boundaries. There's boundaries, but those, and, and I know it sounds like Elliot contradicts himself constantly, and I do, because there's no hard and fast fucking rules. Anybody who's listening to Elliot and they expect me to say the same thing, because I saw, I read my comments. I see people commenting like, oh, Elliot said something different last week. That's because it's a different situation with a different person, and I'm thinking differently right now, and it's a different angle. It got to come from different angles. We can't be everything's a, a, a nail. If you all you got is a hammer, everything's a nail, and that's not how life is. So right now you're asking about st struggling to establish firm boundaries. Think of it less as boundaries and think of it more as distance, Right? A boundary means I'm putting up this wall. Think about the wall, right? Donald Trump wall. That means you staying on that side and I'm staying on this side and there's no crossing. That's not what I'm talking about. And life isn't that, especially our emotional life, our spiritual life, the life of the soul is not that hard and fast. There are times when there need to be a strong boundary, right? But at the same time, you also have to be able to see when that boundary needs to be a little flexible. Right? There are times when you got to wreck that wall quick. Boom! Put that wall up. Don't let anything in. But it doesn't stay that way. There are times when you have to say, okay, all right, all right, let's open the door. Open the door. See what's out there. Oh, okay, cool. And then there could be communication. There could be something that happens. So that's really what it is, man. You say, while well, at time, time, you say, I'm trying to struggle, I'm struggling to establish boundaries. But then you say, at the same time, being tuned in, listening, and receptive. It's both. It's both. It's both. And, and I hope you can see that. I hope you can understand that. I hope that's not too confusing for you, dude. There's, I know where the, I know where the line is. And I'm going to pay attention to what's appropriate for my response in this moment.
He says, I don't know how to actually be available and listen to the feelings, but not be at the mercy of the feelings. The way you become at mercy to the feelings is by giving them meaning. If you objectify the feelings, it basically means I'm feeling these feelings, but I don't believe these feelings. I'm not letting these feelings get. So, okay, here's how it gets carried away. The feeling comes, but this is the, this is the linchpin. If the feeling comes and I start having thoughts about that feeling, and then I start thinking about the person that gave me that feeling and the situation that created that feeling and then what I could do to get rid of this feeling. And then you start like ruminating about the feeling in your mind. Now you have engaged and, if, and, and, and that's, that's where they get you. But if you have the feeling and the best thing to do is to remain curious about the feeling. I have this feeling. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, with my wife, she knows because there's a period coming. So the question is, why am I feeling this way? Oh, because my cycles. And it's the same thing with you too. I don't think you guys recognize, and, and it's, huff, it's, it's a little tougher for us, but men have cycles too. I recognize this most evidently with ejaculation cycles. After ejaculating, I'm a little bit more grumpy. So with women, it's like, you know, bigger cycles monthly. But men, if you're jerking off or you're having sex three days a week or whatever every week, you're going through little mini cycles because your hormones change. Did you know that? This is part of the reason why you can't trust your feelings because your hormones change. Let me give you a little bit. I'm just being transparent with you guys right now. I did not want to get on this call today. I did not want to get on this call today. I'm still fighting off this fucking flu thing. All I want to do is lay down. All I want to do is take naps. I don't even want to eat. I don't want to do anything. And I caught myself today when I was saying to myself, man, I, don't, I was dragging my ass coming in here. I was like, man, I don't, I don't want to do it. And then you know what? The demon in my head started saying, why do you keep doing these calls? Why are you doing this? Look at all these questions, man. Why? why, why how much longer are you going to do this? Aren't you tired of doing this? That's what the demon in my head started started trying to trick me into having a conversation about because of a fucking feeling I was having. But I ignored all those feelings. I'm like, that's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. And so I'm ignoring every fucking word that's come, being whispered in my ear by that demon. And that's what the demons will do. They will hijack your feeling and then give you reasons to do dumb shit. You can't do it. You got to feel the feeling. And you got to be open. Don't make decisions. He says, I got it. So I'm struggling with the tension of ignoring the feelings or trying to fix the feelings. Yeah, both of those are wrong. Both of those are wrong. Sounds like you're abdicating mindfulness. Yes, notice the feeling, but don't feel obligated to necessarily, necessarily do anything. Ah, that's it. You got it mindfulness right because you're struggling between two bad things you don't ignore the feeling you don't ignore your wife <laughs> those are two those are two ways down a slippery slope to a bad life you don't ignore your feelings and ignore your wife because there's something there there's something there there's definitely something there but don't try to fix it yeah right and so when you try to fix your feelings it's like i'm gonna ruminate i'm gonna think about my feelings right like me before i was trying when i was dragging my ass to come into this room i was trying to fix my feeling by saying i'm not gonna do this today and maybe i don't want to do this anymore right that was dumb that was dumb that's i'm not trying to fix it right that was a demon in me trying to trying to ruin my life just don't feel obligated and necessarily do anything. So I felt my feelings. I was allowing myself to be, I'm grumpy today. I'm allowing myself to be grumpy. I was grumpy. I was, uh, I woke up, I took a, I was taking a nap right before this call. I was laying down. I was grumpy. I was like, I don't want to get up. Right? But I didn't take that seriously. I didn't take it seriously. I'm like, yeah, I'm in a mood right now. I'm fighting something off right now. So I feel bad. It doesn't mean I need to do anything about my life or change my lifestyle or fix anything. You just, you just get up and do it anyway. Moods pass. Moods are like clouds. They're just going to pass. This is going to pass. I know this. Lo I've been around long enough and I know myself long enough to know that this is just a mood. I've made decisions, bad decisions, 
bad like long-term decisions based on short-term moods it's not a good idea <laughs> i learned that the hard way so i don't do that anymore i just say all right shut up i tell my mood to shut up and then it goes away so hope that helps dude yep be steady pay attention done yo it's your bro elliot i hope you enjoyed that video if you did you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent king transformation classes with my students where among other things we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.